All right, so this is what you need to finish the back of your piece. If it's a piece of wood or a canvas, it's basically all the same. Um, you can get a little, a little uh, more aggressive with, with a piece of wood or a cradle board because it's wood and you're not gonna really damage it too bad. Um, but like with a canvas, when you do, you have to be careful not to hit, go too much and hit the canvas or it'll rip and that's not good. So, with this is what you need, just get you a block, some 80 grit, some very aggressive sandpaper because you don't want to take a lot of time on knocking these little guys down if you don't have to. Um, the, the spray adhesive is for to spray on here so that your when you put your sandpaper on it doesn't go anywhere nice and nice and uh, steady or not steady what is the word I don't know so it doesn't move around on you <laughs> I'm not I'm not wording right today and then the black is to paint the back and um, thank you to uh, Miss Laura Taylor she got me this Molotov paint. It is amazing. Um, I'm not a fan of their caps. It doesn't spray very uh, smooth. So I, I like to get this uh, thin cap. I want to call it a German skinny because back in the day they were gray and they looked just like this and they, that's what they called them. So I just call them a German thin. I'm not for sure what the name of it is, but it's, it's a very nice, you can get a very nice, I'll demonstrate here after I prep this but what you do just take your no, that's not gonna matter just take your spray adhesive and just spray a little bit on your on your piece of wood here let it sit for a second and get some air to it it gets sticky and if you want, you could you could probably just put this on here and then cut it to size. But um, you could have all the sides around, so you have a nice little edge here, flat, flat. So you just hold it. So then you take your piece, find all your little above guys. And just give it some pressure and you can see it you can see you can tell it's getting knocked down if you want so that you know that you're not damaging your your piece you could actually take tape and just put it all on here this is this was a quick set by stone coat and it is very solid. I'm uh, confident that it won't be scratched um, unless you, you can have something down here. You could probably get like a towel and put it down there um, or you can just get a rag like this and then that way all the dust you definitely uh, Definitely know it's not gonna be scratched. So, do that. Just sand all these guys off. And it, it, uh, it cuts it down pretty quick. I hope I'm not covering that up. I think that is touching. Um, you could also use a yeah, hand sander. Uh, even 60 would probably work a little better, but you just want to get it knocked down. Not necessarily has to be flush. You just want those little bumps to go away. Very unattractive. And if somebody tries to frame it, it could be lopsided. This piece you most likely have to frame or float. 
whichever you prefer. Um, move over so you don't, you've already used that. These guys are, this resin is tough. You guys have to try this quick set by Stone Coat. It is truly a very nice material. You have about 15 to 20 minute working time, depending on your temperature, your location. Um, and it sets up nice and fast and shiny. Stuff is perfect for geodes. If you're making small geodes, for multi-layer and you know you can make five or six layers in one day if you wanted probably gonna fast forward this part so here you go Now that you have your drips sanded off, that's pretty good. You can still feel them, but it's no biggie. Nobody's gonna see the back of it. This just makes it all look nice. And it's like when you get a new pair of shoes and the bottom looks nice. <laughs> Nobody sees the bottom, but they still put some put some work in it so it looks nice. Um, you could do that to the edge. You could sand the edge if you want, but unless you plan on painting it, which wouldn't be a bad idea for a small piece like this. Um, but if you use this 80, you definitely want to go hit it with a 120 and then possibly like a 2 to a 4 to make it a lot smoother if you're not going to put a another flood coat over it. And you just gotta be careful when you're sanding these edges, don't go up too high or you'll hit, you'll hit your painting here. So that's up to you if you wanna sand these edges. I'm just gonna knock this down a little bit. And this is a pretty small piece um, and I'm not kicking up too much of this dust, too much of this resin dust. So if you are doing it with a hand sander, sander uh, you definitely want to wear a, a mask, a respirator. I'm just slowly getting these, uh, getting these off so you don't have too much kicking up here. Let's just smooth this out so it looks nice. Wipe all this dust off, nice and clean. You don't want to put any, you don't want to paint this with dust on it or it won't stick or it'll just look bad. So, take your rag, get you all this dust here. And just lay it flat. You can if you want. 
So you know you're not going to get any overspray. Just do it like this. Just take your piece. And this is a good thing too. You should already have it taped off so that you don't, you know, worry about scratching your piece. But I had already put that rag down there. So make it to where it overlaps. Just like that. So when you spray it, you can get this side if you want. If not, you don't, you don't have to worry about it. And this way you don't have to worry about overspray getting on your piece. And if you guys missed this video on how to do a flood coat on a piece, um, how you do it? Doink, doink, doink. Doink, doink, doink. <laughs> Check out that video on a flood coat. All right, now you have your border, so you have to worry about any overspray getting on your piece. Here, I'm just gonna show you the difference in this spray paint. Make sure you're vent ventilated and wear a respirator when you do spray paint. Okay, so this is with their stock tip. Here, let's do this. I should not be painting on this. This piece of wood is a shelf to these, to these uh, shelves they have here at the south side that are like at least a hundred years old. Like, apparently people keep walking off with them. It's not, it's not very nice. Um, so this is the stock tip. Stock tip. And check this out. You can get these at local graffiti shops. Um, like smoke shops normally have graffiti supplies. You can get them online. Um, I just saw Bombing Science has everything graffiti related. Um, like you can just tell right there like look at that check this out how amazing is that <laughs> you didn't even see that damn <laughs> That was a fail. Well, you can see that there. Stock tip, graffiti tip. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention there, was I? All right, so now let's paint this. And if you want, you can use different colors, no biggie. I just like to use black because the edges are black on this piece. And it just kind of fades right in. Can't tell. Um, but if you like, you can put some color in there that matches the background or that matches the uh, actual piece. And that way, it looks nice. I'm gonna paint these edges. And there you go. Let's see. Let me get some gold and put some gold in there. It just lets people know that you definitely take pride in your work front and back. This is uh, Montana gold. This is probably some of the best gold you can get on the market and it if your surface is smooth enough it will be shiny like this like it's a mirror finish um, who sent this to us these wow. big old these big old cans of Montana 
They sent us four of them. Yeah. Yeah, and Corpy. She was awesome. Thanks for that. We still use it. Um, you can just like spray a little and just like, just give you a little hint of some, some gold. There you go. Now your back looks nice. Get the heat gun out. Give you some heat. This is the heat gun that we use here. All the items I've used in this video will be uh, down in the description box. Boink, boink, boink down there. <laughs> and now if you like, you can take a gold paint pen or something, a white paint pen. Put a little message on the back. You can sign it on the back or the front, whichever you prefer. Um, stuff this small, I normally sign on the back. I don't like to take up, you know, too much room for something. Unless the uh, client says, I would love your signature on the front, and sign it on the front. They got little tiny paint pins to do tinier signatures. Let's see here. Where's mine at? We got this one. We use these Pen Touch Gold. This is a fine tip. They actually have an extra fine tip as well for little bitty pieces of art. Um, and, I, and when you sign it on the back, it doesn't really matter which way, however you want to. You know, you can write it here. And if the person wants to, they can hang it whichever way they feel, which they like. So your signature's on the front, so it's not upside down or sideways or something. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do an ATD. And there you go. Voila. Have a good day, y'all.